Hello everyone and welcome to part 1 of my tutorial about Ender.io. Because Ender.io is awesome, there is extremely a lot of stuff, so there will be quite a few videos that uh, cover all the pieces that are more or less needed uh, to get yourself the extreme nice automation that's possible. So let's jump right into it. I prepared a little bit of stuff. Um, there is uh, at the beginning the segmill, which is more or less the ore doubling mechanic from Ender.io. Um, you just place any piece of ore in there and he is working and working and you get yourself uh, two polarized iron out of it and sometimes a little bit more stuff. Depends on the ore that you put in there. As you see, now we got ourselves two pulverized iron. Um, he needs uh, energy. It can use RF. And uh, you actually have, of course, to hook it up to any energy source that you want to make. I just used a creative energy cell because it's my testing environment. So uh, he can store 100,000 RF. And there are also actually a few upgrades. First of all, there is the double layer capacitor, which doubles the uh, amount of energy that he can store, but it uses now 60 RF per tick. It's actually more or less, well, it's completely the same as if you would uh, use the 20 RF thingy, just it's a lot faster. Let me show you. As you see, well, quite a bit faster. Another two pieces here. And then there is also the octadic capacitor, which is the top tier and it's also quite expensive. You need to burn yourself down quite a bit of stuff. First of all, two double layer capacitors, which are two basic capacitors, which are like this. And then you need the energetic alloy to get yourself the double layer capacitor, which is actually quite a bit expensive. Well, not really. The first tier is not that expensive. It's just a little bit of glowstone, gold and redstone. And then you get yourself, or you have to make yourself two. And also some vibrant alloy, which is the expensive stuff because it's energetic alloy in smelting modes or in alloy modes uh, with an uh, ender pearl. So yeah, ender pearls. You never have enough of them. So let me show you guys what you can do awesome stuff with the segmill. It's actually possible to configure him to uh, take out or push into uh, inventories or also do it do the same uh, simultaneously more or less so we want to configure him to pull from this chest so if we snack an iron and put it in there zack, he has polarized it automatically but of course with the octatic capacitor he uses quite a bit of energy but bam he was done extremely fast so let me show you guys how you can do it on the top side. If you shift or if you just uh, left click, you can move around the thingy so you can uh, go to the site that you want to configure and then simply right click um, to change the modes. First mode is pull, which we already did to pull from this chest. Then there is also the push mode which we will actually do on that side. And there is also the push-pull mode. In that mode, he would push and re-pull back into uh, one chest. But of course, if you have two, he does not know where to do, so it's kind of a little bit of derpy. So if you use that mode, don't have any other stuff configured. So there is also the disabled mode so that you, if you have maybe a pipe coming around, 
he does not connect and does not let him output anything into that pipe or conduit or whatever you want to use. So, um, last thing about the sag mill, you can actually put also a little bit of flint in there, which in the process of or doubling is used. But just a little bit, you can actually use a little bit more, uh, or one uses can be done with more. So, tuck and tuck. As you see, there is always only one piece used. So, he inputted everything into this chest. As you see, he got my quite a bit of stuff and also one cobblestone. Let's come to the alloy smelter, which is the electrical furnace uh, from Ender IO. Well, not only, because he can also smelt alloys. And not only the Ender IO type, also, for example, Invar or, well, and more or less any kind of, what do you say, alloy that can be smelted can be done also in here, except I think Enderium is not possible in here. I actually never tried it, so maybe let me just snag a little bit of Enderium. Where are we? Tuck. And some pyrophium. One and tuck. Yeah, you can see it's not possible to do the enderium stuff. So you guys know it now. And I also do it. So, uh, the same as uh, with the segmill, you can configure the sites to input, output, or, well, do the two things simultaneously. Well, not simultaneously, first burn, and then put it out. Um, let me just show you the same here, tuck pulling and pushing on that side. Yourself asking yourself now maybe, why has he this chest up there? Well, there are sometimes a few pieces of stuff that you want only smelted, which you can actually put directly in here. So why? Yeah, he needs to be in furnace mode to smelt all the stuff. So we don't need him up there because if you do it in this way, you can actually just have him as the input chest for that one and the input chest for everything is just here. Otherwise, you can actually also break this one, snag this one. If you shift right click with the wrench, or more or less any wrench, uh, but I always like to have the Yita wrench, which is from Ender IO. Uh, you can snag it and he contains or retains anything, the energy, for example, also if I would put the capacitor in there, he's actually quite a li lot faster. As you see, he's burning down three pieces at a time. So, of course, he needs three times the time but if we would, for example, just put one in there, bam, he's already finished. So in this mode, of course, it's always better if you have just a chest up there. So it depends on how you want to have your stuff. But I have seen more or less the best way is to have something in between. So that actually, if there is some back stuff going on, back stuffing going on, it's going on in here and not in the sag mill, so that he can do his stuff continuously. Um, what's also nice about the Ender IO stuff is if you use the Ender IO conduits, you can with them, let me snag them back actually configure him to not do anything as you have seen if i have him on disabled he can't connect so yeah if you shift 
left click on the conduit you can tell him well you should extract in various kind of modes you can insert or you can be disabled of course and there is also the mode to in and outputs which is extremely nice if we want we want to have some really nice compact stuff for example maybe having a complete line of smelteries and seg mills down here actually let me do it this way and also snag maybe a little bit more away here yeah i know i'm using the wrong tool but uh, who cares so actually he can now suck and we disable him for the moment and also we'll put him away so he can now boom, 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 down there. input on any channel that you want to specify you have the possibility to use any uh, color that's possible in vanilla minecraft and then you can tell him okay there's also a priority so always go first into this alloy smelter maybe if you have a second one you can tell him okay if this one is full do it on this way but there is also a better way to do that if you have it have it extracting from something you just use the round robin so he's well in anything that he can input he's telling well let's first put it in the first one then in the second one and the third one fourth and so on and then coming back to the first second third blah blah so on so where were we Tuck. in extract modes you can tell him also a lot of stuff but the nice thing you can do it simultaneously so he can actually input and output on the same line and you don't have to worry about backstuffing of stuff so let me show you guys um, I will just put a little bit of that in there tell him to extract always and now tell him just him that he is an input and now what we should see nice some iron ingots landing in here but the conduit stuff is well a lot uh, to cover so there will be actually uh, well another episode just about conduits okay guys i hope you liked that little tutorial just about the ore doubling mechanic how you maybe can automate the stuff and if you are interested to see more about that you should actually watch my let's play series where i do some crazy automation with all that stuff so if you liked it please press the like button and you should also subscribe to be informed about new episodes of tutorials and yeah that's it thanks for watching and see you next time bye bye